This is BBC World. Putting news first. Millions of people died in the man-made Ukrainian famine of the 1930s, now more than 70 years on. The man who brought it to the attention of the world is being recognised. Gareth Jones was the British reporter who unmasked one of Stalin's greatest atrocities, an attempt to quell dissent in part of the communist Soviet Union. Gareth Jones sacrificed his reputation and possibly his life to expose what was going on. Cambridge University is putting on a display of his work and he's also the subject of a new documentary. His diary was found in the late 1980s. Here are some of his notes. 10th of March, 1933. Boy on train asking for bread. I dropped a small piece on the floor and put it in a spittoon. Peasant came and picked it up and ate it. Peasant on train. Kohoitz had no bread. Peasant woman. Many are dying. We're starving. Talk to a group of women peasants. We're starving. Two months we've hardly had bread. We're from Ukraine and we're trying to go north. They're dying quietly in the villages. Kohoitz is a terrible. Looks like a fascinating documentary, doesn't it? Joining me from Cambridge now is Rory Finnan, who lectures in Ukrainian studies. It's quite amazing that he managed to discover all this, Gareth Jones, because uh, certainly at the time the Soviets were trying to keep it under wraps, weren't they? That's right, Jonathan. Uh, Gareth Jones is a truly remarkable figure. Um, he was in Moscow in the spring of 1933, and he did something quite um, uh, intrepid. Uh, he traveled across and slipped across the border from the Russian Soviet Socialist Republic to the Ukrainian, walked through the eastern Ukrainian countryside on his own with a rucksack, um, and took down these um, uh, first-person encounters with starving peasants. Um, so the diaries that we're exhibiting today are really a, stir a stirring historical record. How did Gareth Jones's, uh, I suppose, re revelations, and they were revelations, they were quite dramatic at the time, how did that go down with the Soviet? Uh, not well, as you might imagine. Uh, Jones issued a press release in Berlin. It was picked up by a number of periodicals uh, around the world. Um, Jones was unique as a journalist because he staked his name and reputation in exposing the famine uh, that was going on in, in Ukraine, the lower Volga region, as well as the North Caucasus to the world. Um, he was a former aide to Lloyd George and he staked that relationship in, in, in reporting the story. Uh, within 24 hours, however, uh, journalists, um, including the Pulitzer Prize winning uh, journalist from the New York Times, Walter Durante, denied Jones' account, called it a scare story, called him a Cambridge student with a keen and active mind. Um, so Jones' uh, story was quickly discredited, unfortunately, even though he was speaking the truth to the world. Rory Finn and live in Cambridge, thank you very much. A very thank interesting you, story. On BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, this is Jeremy Salis. We're on the Jeremy Salis Breakfast Show and the diaries of a British reporter who exposed Stalin's terror famine in the Ukraine go on display in Cambridge. Gareth Jones published articles about the 1930s famine, but other Western journalists rubbished his claims. And with his reputation in tatters, he was murdered in China by bandits who were probably in the pay of the Soviets. Well, Rory Finnan is a lecturer in Ukrainian studies at Cambridge University. Morning to you, Rory. Morning, Jeremy. Wow, sounds like quite a life story of this chap. It's guys. an extraordinary story. He was a really remarkable figure, largely forgotten uh, to this day, and we're hoping to, uh, of course, increase his profile and uh, share the story with the public. So uh, tell me more about, I don't know anything about this uh, terror famine, I'm embarrassed uh, to say. Well, it was a famine that afflicted the Soviet Union, but particularly uh, the Ukrainian Republic of the Soviet Union in 1932-33. It's believed, and most historians now agree, that between three and five million died in Ukraine alone. There are also hundreds of thousands dead in the North Caucasus and the lower Volga region in the Soviet Union. Um, and journalists knew of this famine. They had heard rumors about it. But what really distinguishes Jones is that he decided to go um, slip through the border of the Russian Republic to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic in 1933 and see for himself the Ukrainian countryside. And there he witnessed absolutely extraordinary famine. So why did other journalists stay away? Just too dangerous. A lot of the journalists mainly wanted to keep access to the Kremlin. And so this was a story the Kremlin did not want to touch. And so journalists, uh, to a degree, either ignored it or some of them actually actively uh, denied Jones's report. Uh, Jones released um, 
uh, a press statement in Berlin. It was picked up by a number of periodicals around the world. Within about 24 hours, we have um, a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist from the New York Times, Walter Durante, denying uh, Jones's account, calling him uh, a young Cambridge man with a keen and active mind, but that he was overreacting, that this was a scare story. And meanwhile, of course, Jones was uh, telling the truth as millions were dying. So was, when he was alive, was, was he disgraced then? Did he die in disgrace and didn't know that he'd be respected later on down the line? Or I think, you know, he was discredited, certainly, and his reputation as a journalist and his own sense of uh, self certainly were compromised. Um, but he was undaunted. He kept uh, reporting stories. He actually went to the Far East. He was forbidden to return to the Soviet Union because of his uh, report on the famine. Um, and he was killed, tragically, uh, two years later in Inner Mongolia under suspicious circumstances. What, ha what happened? Uh, he was uh, taken captive by uh, Chinese bandits in Inner Mongolia, held captive for 16 days and, and shot. And these diaries, which are now going on display, we've only struck upon them by chance. Is that right? That's right. The family discovered them. Uh, actually, the family home was burgled in 1990, and they happened to be going through their things and noticed a suitcase full of documents and these diaries themselves, which really gave voice to these peasants that have been lost to us for, uh, for, so, mo for so long. How do, we, how do we come and look at them? Uh, they're at the Wren Library at Trinity College. Um, uh, admission is free. It's open to the public. Um, I'd recommend uh, listeners, if you're interested in seeing them, to go to www.cambridgeukrainianstudies.org. You'll see a link, and it'll tell you a bit more about opening hours and that, that kind of thing. Okay, Rory, it's been really fascinating talking Thanks to you. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Thank you for bye coming bye. in. Take care. See That's uh, Rory Finian, uh, who's a lecturer in Ukrainian studies at Cambridge University. <laughs> Diaries have gone on show in Cambridge of a former student who exposed a famine in Ukraine in the 1930s which killed millions of people. Gareth Jones was branded a liar by the Soviets, but his accounts were true. 10th of March, 1933. Boy on train asking for bread. Many beggars. Peasants on the streets crying for bread. Graphic accounts of people starving. 1930s Soviet policy meant excessively high grain quotas requisitioned from Ukraine. Gareth Jones ignored Russian propaganda, crossing the border illegally to report the story. I think he was a hero. These two diaries, his pocket journalist diaries, probably represent the only independent Western verification of arguably Stalin's greatest atrocity. Gareth Jones was educated at Trinity College, Cambridge. His accounts were later discredited. A New York Times journalist who had won the Pulitzer Prize at the time said that Gareth Jones was a young Cambridge graduate with a keen and active mind, uh, but he simply wandered through the countryside side and found conditions sad. And of course, what uh, Jones saw was quite horrific. In 1933, Jones met Hitler. He was unimpressed, describing him as a middle-class grocer. He was the first foreign journalist to fly with the newly appointed Chancellor of Germany. And he wrote in uh, one of his articles, if this plane should crash, the whole history of Europe would change forever. Two years after exposing the famine in Ukraine, Jones was kidnapped and killed. His diaries are now on show, and tonight a film at the art cinema documents that era. Faye Southwell, BBC Look East, Cambridge.